Hi, I'm Adam. Hello, I'm Jenny. And we're back again uh, for another little podcast. This time we thought we would talk about uh, the Sigma Knowledge Engineering Environments little tool for showing graphical representations, or at least hierarchical representations, of concepts in Sumo. So we'll go from ontologyportal.org once again to browse in yes. Sigma. Um, so we'll start off looking at a particular term with a big hierarchy. So process. Process is a good one to start with. Uh, there's tons of process types. So this is our typical browser page. And what we want to do is see, for example, all of the subclasses of process. Yes, that would be good. So we'll go to graph. Okay, and what we get here is one concept higher in the hierarchy and all the concepts one level lower than process. Mm -hmm. So we see there's a content bearing process, dual object process, etc. And so we get a little metric on the numbers of children that each of these classes has. So we know where it makes sense to expand the subtree and get a little snippet of their comment, of their documentation string. Um, so let's take a Can look. Can I just have a yeah. look? So on the very top we have we have physical, right? And then to the right we have five. That means there are five physical. So there are five yeah. direct children of the class physical. Right, and then process in uh, under process you have eleven direct children, right. which One, is underneath. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Right. I'm most interested in the intentional process. Intentional process. Okay, let's take a look then. So if we go all the way over to the right and click on this little carrot, uh, that gives us a graph that now instead of starting with process, it's going to start with intentional process. Now I noticed because I remember having some trouble when I used when I did a exercise on process, I had to decide on some uh, restraint on the uh, agent. So here it said a certain process that has to be performed by a cognitive agent as opposed to a sentient agent and all that. Right. Yeah, so that's a good way to find out the constraint or the specification of certain variable or, or axiom that you use. Yeah, it, if looking at the subclasses of a, pro, of a class will often give you some more detail that helps you understand the class itself. So looking at all of the kinds of intentional process there are will help you understand what an intentional process is. That's part, the subclasses are part of the definition right. uh, of the parent class. So here we are. Let's take a look at all, if there are lots of subclasses, 29 of intentional process. Okay, so you can keep working your way down the hierarchy by clicking on right. more specific links. There's another way to do this, though. Okay. Um, let's go back a little bit. Go back to process. Right. We can actually look at levels below all on the same screen. We don't have to do it one level at a time. So if we want to look at two levels below, right. we can go ahead and do that. OK, now we get a more indented list Okay. Right, showing all the subclasses. That's more fun. Yeah. <laughs> and we can go down to arbitrary levels. There's also a total term limit. So like if you go down, uh, you maybe you have, there are certain portions of the hierarchy that are not so broad but are fairly deep. And maybe you want to see the whole thing. You can right. put in large numbers for levels below. But it's a good idea once you start doing that to put on a total term limit so that the system doesn't just run off into infinity gathering, right. you know, all 10,000 uh, classes in sumo that happened to be under some general okay. general term. So normally what number would you recommend to determine limits? Well normally I don't actually don't use this. This is okay. sort of a very special case thing. I, I normally just use you know two or three levels and okay. browse from there. Sometimes it's also useful to go up a level but right. uh, less, less often. Right. Shall we try put a three there and see what happens? Yeah it's gonna start getting a little big but I think it's still manageable. Okay, right. now you can start seeing we got several more levels indenting. Yeah, we're looking at intentional process. Intentional process, right. Looks like recreation or exercise and then game itself has, right. has more. If we go down to four levels, then we'll get other subclasses of game and so forth. 
Right. What's the dot mean? Dot means uh, there's no subclasses. I see. Right. Okay. So let's uh, let's do one other thing. So for folks that uh, are not used to doing full logical theories in first order logic, if you're used to lighter weight ontology languages, um, you may think you may have a feeling that this is kind of all there is, right? We're just going to browse based on class and superclass. Okay. But in a formal ontology like Sumo, there's a lot more than just superclass and subclass. Okay. Um, we can look at whole hierarchies of different things. There are actually several of these taxonomic-like uh, sets of relations uh, in Sumo. So in addition to subclass, we also have sub-attribute. Instead of typing it out, I'll do this. And let's let's look at, uh, well, let's see, we should find it. We have to find an attribute. Uh, so process, of course, doesn't have any sub-attribute relations. So let's look at, uh, okay. in fact, let's go back and let's do this a slightly different way. Let's go back and look at some attributes. So we can, because a sub-attribute is actually a relationship between attribute instances, instances. not attribute classes, right? right? So let's try to look at some interesting attributes. So let's look at position. Okay, these are like for job positions. Right. Okay, so let's find a, see if we can find an interesting instance like... Uh, governor. Governor. Governor is an instance. Uh, but it doesn't have any sub-attributes. So actually, let, let's try another method. Maybe I'll find this fist faster. Let's look at sub-attribute itself as a relation. That'll give us some examples we can follow. Okay. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so Consul General, for Consul example, General. has a sub-attribute. Okay, so now we can go into Graph yes. for Consul General. Right. And it doesn't have any subclasses, of course. It's an instance, so it can't have any subclasses. But it does, we know, have sub-attribute. Okay, so now we can see that diplomatic agent oh, has right. a sub-attribute of console gen. These are all, again, instances. We're looking at the sub-attribute hierarchy, not the subclass hierarchy. We can actually right. pop up to diplomatic agent and take a look at its whole structure. So these kind of representation could be useful in terms of drawing a company org chart or things like that? Uh, yeah, company org chart. So yeah, so here again we have uh, the sub-attribute, sets of sub-attribute relations. So this is another whole hierarchy. Um, basically, from a mathematical standpoint, any transitive binary relation um, can form uh, this kind of, any partial ordering relation, I should say, more technically, can form this kind of a hierarchy. And there are lots right. of these in Sumo. Um, a par physical parthood is another thing you can get full hierarchy. So. Right. OK. Um, there's a few more controls. You can turn off displaying some of these different columns. If you don't want to see the documentation, you can do that. Right. Um, at one time, we had a real graphical representation. That isn't working at the moment, so you can just it's ignore too that. Too big, isn't it? <laughs> there's too many different functions. Right. OK. Anything else that you can think of that you want to uh, see for, for now? For the moment, I'm quite happy with this uh, graphic display. Okay, so short lesson for today. I uh, hope it's useful. It's one of the handies, hand, more handy features in Sigma that hopefully will get you a, a quick overview of the, the lay of the land, as it were, of uh, Sumo, and uh, hope you enjoyed it. And we'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.